Hi folks, I'm Lynn Woodland. Welcome to the Miracles Course. Um, I'm the creator of the Miracles Course. I'm also the author of a couple of books about miracles. Uh, the first one is called Holding a Butterfly, an Experiment in Miracle Making. And that book from the very first page basically draws readers into a real-time experiment in creating miracles. Um, the second book is called The Breakthrough Point, A Spiritual Activist Guide to Thriving in a Modern World. And it too continues the miracle experiment. It's, it's, very, it's a very experiential read. So as you're reading it, you're actually um, going through exercises and joining virtually with other readers, you have, you have to like check it out. It's almost hard to explain. But the second book takes a really deep look at why our times are just so crazy, why they're so volatile and unprecedented, and you know why our politics are just so, what can I say, <laughs> crazy making. Um, and, and it looks at how this is actually part of an evolutionary wave that we're in the midst of. And the, the book talks a lot about how we can ride this wave instead of feeling pummeled by it. Um, so what we're doing here, the Miracles course, is a weekly class um, every week for a year just about with a, a few weeks off here and there where every week is a complete experience so that you can drop in from time to time without feeling like you're coming in in the middle of the movie. Um, but at the same time, each lesson builds upon the last in much the same way the, the seasons build upon, one builds upon the other. And in fact, I, I kind of sandwich the content into the context of the four seasons and use that as a template for the whole of the human journey. So we really do cover a very wide range of personal and spiritual experience with the goal of um, becoming miracle makers and living a miraculous life. So there's no beginning or end to this course and a lot of people just do it year after year because even though the lessons don't change, we are always different when we come to each exercise. And, um, you know, it's always different every time around. Uh, so I always suggest having pen and paper handy for these, and you'll want to have that for tonight. We're in the summertime when nature is just so burgeoning and blooming and bearing fruit and vegetables and abundance, I like to give attention to manifesting, the spiritual principles of manifesting. And in the month of July in particular, I give a lot of attention to prosperity, like, like financial prosperity, money, um, what is true prosperity? So that's what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks. So we have a couple more weeks to go in this, this set of exercises. If you missed any of the, the first two of the month, um, I'll give you, a, I'll tell you how you can um, review the uh, recordings to catch up if you'd like. So the emphasis of tonight is all about unearthing limiting beliefs about money and prosperity so that we can consciously choose our future instead of just blindly recreating our past and our parents' past. It's because no amount of working on prosperity is going to take root if we're still operating from unconscious expectations of scarcity. Um, what we learn about money growing up actually has a huge effect on how we attract money and whether we create 
prosperity or struggle with it. Some examples of learned messages about money might be things like, I have to work really hard for it, or money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> How many of us have heard that? Or there's enough for what I need, but not enough for what I want, just enough to get by. Or I always have plenty. I don't really need to think much about money. Don't we all know somebody or another like that? Or money is the root of all evil, and so on and so on and so on. I could just go on and on rambling on all the various things we might have learned about money along the way. Now, if money came easily in your family of origin and your, your parents never worried or obsessed over it, you're likely to grow up to be the same way. Now, if your parents struggled with money, no matter whether they had a lot or a little, you know, if they overemphasized it in one way or another, you're likely to struggle as well. As, you know, we just pass that on from one generation to another, and hopefully every, every generation, you know, learns a little bit, grows a little bit beyond where our parents have been. Um, but as you look at your experience with money as an adult, notice if the recurring patterns and your attitude around money reflect something you learned early in life. You know, invariably, if there's a situation we've struggled with or worked to change and it still persists, there's bound to be some unconscious payoff keeping it in place. And this is an idea we worked with in greater depth in a lesson in Mar March. Um, I also go into this in some depth in um, my two books. But it's worth looking at here in relation to our experience with scarcity. You know, if money is something you've struggled with, there's bound to be some unconscious agenda keeping you from moving forward the way you'd like. The reasons for why we might prefer to keep unpleasant circumstances in place, I mean, who wants to be miserable? You know, it's not like <laughs> we, we consciously choose that. So the reasons are often hard to see because all of our attention gets focused on why we just want them gone. But as long as these hidden motives remain invisible, um, they still have a lot of power to run our lives. They become the circumstances beyond our control that victimize us. But once we understand and own our whole range of motives, you know, both the ones that say, go, I really want to do this, this is what I really want, go, go, go for it, as well as the ones say, stop. And those are often the ones that are a little less conscious. When we understand the whole range of them and, and you know, just own, take responsibility for them, then we have a lot more choice and power to direct our lives. So just to give an example of what do I mean by this, um, a, a hidden payoff, in other words, for, for not having more money. When I first started working with um, spiritual prosperity techniques, this is way back in my 20s, many, 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 many years ago, I found them to be really effective. And my income actually doubled in a really short amount of time. But rather than being happy about this and saying, yay, just what I wanted, thank you, God, I just felt really uncomfortable. I felt awkward and embarrassed at having significantly more than some of my struggling friends. I didn't know what to do with the extra money. In fact, I remember one night just being at the grocery store thinking, you know, I just had all this money in my wallet. I was just thinking, what's the most expensive thing I could buy for dinner <laughs> to get rid of some of this money? I just have to spend it. You know, seriously, I actually had, had that going on. And um, I also felt 
unable to say no to anyone in my sphere in financial need. And I wound up loaning money to um, a bunch of people who never paid me back. And so it kind of broke um, some friendships because we always forevermore felt kind of uneasy. There was always that big hanging thing like, I loaned you money, you never paid me back, and you never even mentioned it. And they're always like, oh, she doesn't ask me about the money. You know, it's a hard thing. It's, it's, I, I learned never to lend money, only to give it. You know, if I ever was called to lend somebody money, I, I made sure I was willing to do it as an unconditional gift so that if it came back to me, great. If it didn't, you know, I gave it as a gift. Um, so it wasn't until I created the income I thought I wanted that I became conscious of the hidden payoffs to staying poor. It protected me from experiencing a whole assortment of uncomfortable issues I had around money. And, you know, interestingly enough, it wasn't long before I, um, not intentionally, but unconsciously disappeared much of my new income. It just kind of vanished as quickly as it came. Not all of it, though, just enough so I didn't have all the pesky excess to worry about. I had a little more, you know, took the edge off. <laughs> um, but I never had so much that I had enough to loan or worry about having extra. And it really did take some years of learning how to be a good steward of money and to feel deserving of the added power and responsibility that money brings before I again manifested a higher income. So we're going to do um, a little self-assessment to help uncover any payoffs that scarcity may hold for you as well as any issues you might have around increasing the flow of money in your life. So um, I'm going to do a self-assessment, and you might want to close your eyes for this. You, might, you also might want to have paper and pen handy. So if, I, um, if something I, I say just really feels like you, you might want to make a note around that. All right, but you can start with your eyes closed. So just take a couple of deep, full breaths. <sighs> and just feel your body relaxing your thoughts slowing down so that your higher, wiser mind can show you the bigger picture of your life. And just, just reflect right now on your current experience with money. And just ask yourself, how is it flowing? Is it a steady stream? Predictable, something you can count on? Is it an abundant stream or just a little trickle? Or does it come in fits and starts? Do you struggle with there being too little? Or do you struggle even though there is plenty? Are you comfortable and at peace with the flow of money in your life? And if you struggle with not having enough money, ask yourself, how might the condition of scarcity be serving you? What's it helping you or allowing you 
or forcing you to do, be, or have that you wouldn't otherwise experience. And specifically, is financial lack maybe forcing you to let other people help you? Or is it causing you to spend your time differently? Are you receiving attention, either positive or negative, that you wouldn't otherwise get? Are you developing strengths and resources that you didn't know you had? Is it preserving a familiar identity? Might it be allowing you to put off doing something that feels burdensome or frightening? Is it protecting you from failing by preventing you from even beginning something? Does it distract you and keep your attention away from else that would catch your attention as challenging. Does scarcity give you permission to say no? Is saying, I can't afford it, easier than saying, I don't want to? And how are your relationships with other people affected by money issues? Is it a bonding common ground between you and important others in your life? You know, being about maybe the same income level? Or does financial scarcity create space interpersonally? So you pull in to yourself and have fewer relationships and more time alone, more privacy. And if this is true, does it offer protection from, from things like intimacy and the possible hurts that could result from being more connected to people? So for any of you who are very comfortable with the flow of money in your life, ask yourself these questions. If you had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more money than you do now, a sudden windfall, unexpected maybe, just a lot more money, what new choices would you have to make? What added responsibilities would you have to assume? What do you imagine the people in your life would think of you if, if you suddenly came into a lot more money? Are there ways that might separate you from your current community and life? from some of the comfort you experience in your life now? 
Do you fear you'd lose a big source of motivation if you had a lot more money? <clears throat> and what familiar identity would you have to give up? And what advantages of this identity would you no longer have? And how would it change your role in your family of origin? What would your parents think, even if they're no longer living? How would it feel if you far surpassed your parents and other family members' income level? So just gently Bring your attention back to your surroundings, maybe with another deep breath or two. When you're ready, open your eyes. I think um, my frame froze up there for a minute. I know Bill has posted all those questions in the chat. So if there's anything you missed, I think you can find it there. You can even cut and paste things from, from the chat. And also, everything that I just went through, you can find in the written materials. <clears throat> so if there was a little piece that got skipped, there's some, some ways to, to get those. Um, so identifying payoffs for scarcity is really only the first step in being free of them. Because next, of course, we need to be willing to live without them. That makes sense, right? We need to be willing to live without the payoffs of, of not having enough money um, if we want to have more. Now, for me, in the example I shared, I had to be willing to just say no instead of I can't afford it. I, you know, I actually used that excuse a lot. Um, I'm an introvert, and, you know, there's a lot of big... Um, you know, big group things that I often don't want to do. And I remember, you know, there were a lot of years when I would say, oh, I just don't have money to do that. When what I really meant was, no, please, I don't want to do that. And, you know, it just was easier. I had to learn, um, you know, not to do that. And I'd also learn, had to learn how to say no to people who wanted my money. Uh, that was something that, um, a dynamic between my mother and I from the time I moved out and started supporting myself at about age 18, she would come to me for money, in, often in crisis. And um, for, you know, many years, it was a lot easier for me to just be able to say, I, I don't have it, I can't afford it, instead of, no, <laughs> no, I'm not going to give you my money. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, st it gets complicated, this stuff. And sometimes these hidden agendas just go deep and are, you know, uh, stem from way, way back in childhood. Um, sometimes working on this with a friend, with someone who knows you, who can give you feedback, is a helpful way to go. The, what I think about hidden payoffs to unpleasant, you know, situations in our lives, is that they're kind of like a hand stuck to our nose, where from my perspective, it just looks like a great big blob. I know there's something there, but all of you can see, well, it's a hand, duh. You can see it's a hand. I just see it, you know, big thing. So other people can be very helpful that way. Um, if you have a support buddy to do some of this work with. So, um, so if you've identified any of your payoffs, what would you need to do willingly so that you wouldn't need poverty to keep you in your comfort zone? Did anyone, does anyone want to share anything or ask any questions about any of this? Can you, can you just repeat the question again? It was... Um, what do you need to do willingly so that you don't need scarcity 
um, you know, to keep you in your comfort zone. Does that make sense? Like, like if you identify a payoff, what would you need to do to not need the payoff? Like for me, I needed, I needed to be honest. I need to say, needed to say no, I don't want to do that, as opposed to I can't afford it. I need, needed to be willing to, um, if people, you know, wanted a loan, I needed to be willing to say no. Um, instead of, I don't have it. That, that's, the, that's what I mean. You know, there, there's typically some kind of step out of what's comfortable, the most comfortable behavior. Um, once we've identified those payoffs in order to not need them anymore, we need to be willing to take whatever that step is that's not ne necessarily super comfortable, but will keep us from needing um, poverty, you know, to, to kind of take care of us. Questions about that? Do you get that? Everybody's got your payoffs and easy peasy. I don't believe that. <laughs> but, you know, if you have questions about this that you don't want to voice now, um, you're welcome to bring them back next week. In fact, um, come at 7.30. That's when I do mini readings for anyone who wants them. And I can answer any questions uh, that you might have had about a previous lesson. So if you, as you digest it a bit and work with it and you have questions, kind of bring them back. Come a little bit early and we can talk about it. So we're going to do some work with releasing um, patterns around money that aren't working for us and becoming magnetic to true prosperity, which, as I've talked about in recent weeks, True prosperity isn't really about how much money we have. True prosperity is a state of mind that just naturally attracts quality of life of every kind. Um, as I mentioned, I think it was last week, when we have true prosperity, we manage to make more out of less money. You know, even when we don't, when we don't have just a little bit of money, we somehow manifest all that we need, you know. People give us things. We just find ourselves in the right place at the right time to get some kind of lucky break. Um, you know, we, we just have, we, we maintain a good quality of life, whether we have a lot or a little. And that state of mind of true prosperity is what really does start attracting more and more and more into our lives. And, you know, for tonight, for the work we're going to do around this, I'd like you to think of one, maybe even two, people who you know or you know of who embody true prosperity for you in a way you'd like to emulate. Um, I, you know, I've mentioned here in recent lessons a couple of my own role models. One is Peace Pilgrim a woman who um, in la the last century just, just was an amazing woman. She just walked all over the country talking to people about peace and felt more abundant the less she had materially. Literally, she literally owned nothing that she couldn't carry in a couple little pockets in her jersey. And, um, you know, if people gave her money, she just gave it away because she just felt burdened by more. And life was this banquet to her. Now, another of my role models I talked about last week was a massage therapist acquaintance who just always seemed to maintain this incredibly gracious lifestyle, no matter how small her income was. And she just saw her financial um, abundance grow through gifts from people who loved her, you know, she just always has had a very gracious life, whether she had a lot of money or a little money. Now, on the other end of the financial um, spectrum, another role model of mine is my first publisher, 
the founder of Namaste Publishing, uh, Constance Kello. And um, Constance, just really interesting woman, she took all kinds of risks in the pub- publishing business by just really following her heart and making world service the priority instead of doing business the safe way by priori- prioritizing profits. I mean, she really just wanted to bring worthy books to the world. And um, by following this path of service, she actually became very successful and had, you know, a number of world bestsellers. She is the person who discovered Eckhart Tolle and, and brought his books to the world and made, made them known. Um, Eckhart Tolle wrote The Power of Now as well as some others. And, I mean, that is a world bestseller, huge. Now, you know, my own personal role models could not be any more different on the outside, yet they all share in common certain attributes. And these are pivotal, so you might even want to write these down. One is extreme generosity. Another is a desire to be of service. Another is a wholehearted appreciation for the abundance of life. You know, um, just loving life and feeling, you know, really feeling and appreciating the abundance of all that is, celebrating it. Um, And at different stages in my life, different role models stand out. I know there have been times when I felt very fearful about money And Peace Pilgrim would just really remind me of the truth that we're always safe and joyful even. As long as I put myself in God's hands, follow my highest path of service, I will be fine. I just think of of Peace Pilgrim who just, you know, didn't have a home. She just walked around, you know, talking about peace. People took care of her. She just was often on the receiving end of great generosity. Um... It's all it takes. And uh, when I felt at other times in my life, such as when I focused on growing my writing career, Constance Kello has been a, a fabulous role model. So think for yourself of at least one person who best demonstrates prosperity in the way that you now want to manifest it. You know, we all might not want to become peace pilgrim (laughs) and walk around being homeless talking about peace. We might, that might be perfect, but that might just not be where we are right now. Think of of someone um, who really demonstrates prosperity in the way you would like to experience it. And these can be people you know personally or people you know of, Um, you know, maybe famous people, and you imagine, you know, that they have these qualities. You don't have to know for certain. I think just being able to imagine it is enough because if you have difficulty identifying specific individuals, it's fine to make someone up, your imaginary prosperity role role model. Imagine what this person would be like. Someone who is wise, who is abundant, who's free from struggle and fear around money, someone who's generous, and someone who has a great love of life. You know, love of the bounty of life. So wisdom, abundance, no struggle or fear around money generosity, love of life. See, um, see who comes to mind or who, who you could just, what, what kind of, of individual you could just make up in, you know, in your imagination as your, your prosperity mentor who would just have these qualities. Um, Well, we're going to work with this a bit. 
Um, and we're going to go into a bit of more of a meditative space to do this. So get comfortable in your place, in your seat, where you can just close your eyes and turn your attention inward for a bit. <sighs> and just begin with some deep, full breaths. And just let your whole body relax. Your mind just become quiet and still. And just softly let your awareness expand to include your higher self. And, and imagine that as just a beautiful light being that is beyond the limitations of your physical body, even your emotions. It's the spark of God in you, your true self. And see the higher selves of others in this miracles course now joining you. All of us here, but even beyond those of us who are here tonight, we've all gathered once again beyond the illusionary limits of space and time to assist each other in healing because together we form a very powerful circle for spiritual work. So because time really is illusionary in the spiritual realms um, and space too is no obstacle to joining consciousness. First, you can see those who are currently here tonight but then because we can all transcend the illusion of time and space, you can, you can see the lights of all the souls who have in the past and will in the future gather in this Miracles Course circle created by our intent. And really recognize how much more powerful we are together. This, some of the power of the Miracles Course is how we work with this power of joined intentions, joining on behalf of one another. And this joined intention quickens our growth so that things that have seemed difficult in the past can now come more easily. And you can feel the energy of our circle building and building. All of us together, thousands of us, from the past, years past, even from the future, those who will do this exercise together. And just because we are imaginative enough to hold the intention to be together this way, that's how powerful consciousness is. That's all it takes for a joined energy field to occur. So picture us all now immersed in the beautiful limitless sea of light and energy that we've celebrated in recent months as we've entered the seasons of of higher light, of solar light, in summertime. Just imagine that, that we are also connected to a spiritual light that's unlimited. Physicists might call it the zero point field. Metaphysicians might call it the universe, the divine source. Imagine this to be a limitless source of absolute well-being, of unlimited abundance, of pure divine love, of healing energy. 
and feel yourself held in this loving and, and just blissful embrace of this limitless source. That you are just being held and rocked in an ocean of light, breathing it in with every breath, comfortable, peaceful, allowing you to, to just relax ever more deeply. And you breathe deeply from this limitless source and you see that you're drawing deeply from the source doesn't make there be less for anyone else. Any more than your breathing deeply robs breath from other people. And imagine that you're not just held in this limitlessness, but you're actually a part of it. Let yourself become this divine source, ever flowing, abundant, never depleted, no matter how much you outflow. Just see if you can imagine that, just becoming blended, melded with the divine source. It is you, it's in you, it's through you. And when you can start to imagine this, direct your attention to one person in our circle of participants, either here tonight or perhaps someone from the past or the future. And you don't need to know who this person is. Just simply imagine all the soul lights of the many, many people who have done this exercise before you and who will do it in subsequent days, weeks, years. Imagine seeing all the soul lights and let the shine of one draw you. You don't need to see a face or know a name or know any details. Just imagine that you are being drawn to the right person and that you are now the limitless sea of light. And as such, flow a current of beautiful, abundant light and life energy to this person. Do this just using the power of your mind. Your intention makes it so. This isn't hard work. It's easy as the lightest daydream. And this current of energy you send will take whatever form the receiver most needs be it healing, love, money, inspiration, opportunity, peace of mind, whatever that receiver needs, you don't even need to know. All you are doing is sending energy. It, it's like you are just filling this person's spiritual bank account without needing to know who they are, just unconditionally just because you can. And just flow your love and light to the soul with all the abundance and ease that you now invite into your own life. And know that the minute you're able to embody the abundance you want to receive and give it away wholeheartedly, you've already begun to attract the same to yourself. In other words, as you can really feel this and give it to someone unconditionally without even ever having to know exactly who they are. And trust me, this, this kind of transmission is a real thing. There's a lot of even science of consciousness validating it. Imagine that 
your willingness to just flow this kind of powerful life force, love energy, abundance energy to someone, the more you can do that in a heartfelt, unconditional way, the more you're now attracting the same to yourself. Because that is how the laws, the spiritual laws of prosperity work. So just allow yourself to give from your heart as though you are the limitless source, knowing that no matter how much you outflow, you're never empty. And even though we may be separated in space and time, our minds and hearts joining in this work together, it really does give it great power. And that we've built the energy of our circle repeatedly through past exercises gives it more power still. So having this significant energy with you right now creates an opening, if you're willing to reach for it, where a small intention can produce a life-changing result. So as you continue to send this healing wave to another being, you don't know who, hold the intention that you're now creating a new pattern of energy flow in your own life. How you send is how you will now receive. So feel the steadiness the steadiness of the energy you're sending because isn't that how we want to receive? So let it be steady. Feel the limitlessness of it. The ease. The love and the joy of it. And know that whatever you can feel coming through you can now start coming to you you're actually creating a whole new pattern within yourself by flowing to this individual. And just stay in this healing wave for a moment till it reaches just a natural completion. And consider that there may have been someone in our network who just sent that kind of energy to you. So just take a moment to let that in as well. And our, our, our work here isn't done. Our meditation isn't anywhere near done. We're just getting started because now we've prepared ourselves to be ready for prosperity. We've done, we've done the preparation, we've laid a foundation. Um, now we're going to receive the wise guidance of our prosperity role models. Whoever came to mind for you. So just imagine a table and a couple of chairs seated in the middle of a big circle made up by all of the souls from this whole Miracles Course community, past, present, and future. It's a very big circle. And in the middle of this circle, there's a table, you know, just a little table, a couple of chairs, and um, invite the highest manifestation of your role model, the higher self of your role model, to come and join you at this table, where they will take a seat and you will take a seat. And if this is somebody who has passed away, you know, recognize that by connecting with the higher self of someone, even someone who's no longer living in a physical body, Recognize that we're, we're not dragging souls away from important business or imposing on their time. Rather, we're expanding our own consciousness to the realm where we are all one mind and joined in love with all beings. 
and to help your personality access wisdom from the spiritual realm. We're going to imagine this meeting in a very you know, personal way. So see this individual gladly taking a place at the table with you. Imagine that this soul came out of love and benevolent concern for you. Even if this is a person you've never met, at, at the realm of our higher selves, we all have love for one another. We're all connected. So, to receive the wisdom of your teacher, take a moment to put yourself in their role. Just imagine stepping into their life, their being, their state of mind. See the world as this person does. Imagine what they would do in your situation. And imagine all the ways that they feel and behave differently from you. Let yourself experience the inner peace, you know, the ease this person has around money. And, you know, just, just really um, step into their attitudes around money and how they flow money. Be aware of how it's different from you. And now staying in the role of this other, of your role model, imagining that you are them. Picture yourself sitting in that other chair at this table and give advice to yourself. Imagine that you are this, this person who is so very wise and kind and abundant and you have some important guidance to give to this individual who called you here. So take a moment to share what lessons you've come to offer. Just take a moment with that. And um, if it helps to just make some notes as you do this, you know, by all means, get your pen and paper out. Sometimes automatic writing helps where you just start by imagining yourself in, in your role models um, being, body, voice, and speak your own name. Like, hello, Lynn. Thank you for inviting me. Come here to talk to you about, and then see what, see what comes. And just see what comes with this. Sometimes it may feel at first that you're just making it all up, but imagination can be a powerful doorway into intuition and even psychic perception. So it's fine to just start making it all up because sometimes before you know it, things will start coming to you and through you that no longer feel like things you're making up. And if nothing comes in the way of conscious messages at this time, don't be concerned about this. Um, know that you're still receiving information and a transmission at a subconscious level. It may be that your role model just lays a hand on your shoulder or your heart or touches your third eye and gives you just a silent transmission that will come into consciousness at another time. It may surface as new ideas that you may never even connect with this experience. So just see what's there. 
And when you feel complete, just thank your role model for their help. Say goodbye for now, knowing that you can invite them back again another time. You might want to do this exercise when you have a good half an hour or so to just take notes. And um, just let your, let your role model go. You see them going into the light and return to the circle of all of us, our students, participants here. And just send a thank you to the whole group, the whole network of souls for being there as part of your support tonight. And as your attention leaves the circle, know that the healing power of it continues, stays with you, um, will continue to work in dream time and over the next week and weeks. Um, so just gradually let yourself come back to a normal waking state. And what I suggest over the week is to, from time to time, imagine yourself in the role of your role model. You might even think of another role model or two, because different role models will have different things to teach you. And, but from time to time, just put yourself in their role. Just imagine you're walking around in the world as them. Even notice how it might feel different in just living in their body. Because, you know, financial scarcity fears can really cause us to tighten up. You might notice that your role model has a lot of ease in their body that you don't have. Just pay attention to all of that. Uh, notice how a different kind of empowerment you have as you're walking around in the world as this other person. Just play with that because as we imagine ourselves as someone else, we often do start to connect with um, resources that we didn't know we had that are maybe outside the range of our own personality. But we can kind of, you know, by living as if, we can tap into them. Um, And, to, you know, and, and play with that over the week. I want to, I know we've... Well then, my dears, as always, it's, it's always a blessing and an honor to be with you all. And um, if, if you want to cut and paste any of this that Bill put up or the, the, the codes or the links, I'll just leave the... So I'll, I'll leave this up for a bit. I won't close it down right away because I know Bill put more than usual up here. But I'm going to sign off. They're all on the website. On the webpage. Okay. Everything I posted. Okay. Okay. All right, then. I guess we'll, we'll just shut her down for now. Until Thanks, next everyone. week, I love and bless you. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.